welcome back to Behind the Grind. Today we're going to be interviewing uh, pro basketball player Julian Gamble. Uh, now, let's to start off here, uh, you guys went under, undefeated in the regular season in the Euro Cup. How does that feel mm-hmm. to go to be the 18th team ever to do so? It was pretty cool. I mean, um, coming back from the, the season being stopped last year with the pandemic, uh, COVID and everything, it was a little bit disappointing um, not having the opportunity to, to finish what we had started. But knowing that we had majority of the guys coming back from the team that we had last year, we knew that we were going to have the chance to do something special again. So I think it's just kind of a testament to our chemistry, our hard work, and, you know, having uh, enough veterans on our team, knowing that, you know, we have to continue to work day after day, that not get too high or too low after a win or a loss. Yeah. Uh, so you guys just got a win last night. Uh, do you feel good about that win? Are you guys excited to like move forward into hopefully getting into the Euro League next season? Yeah, I mean, last night's win was important for us uh, to finish this kind of first half of the Italian season. Um, we actually set a uh, a record for our, our um, organization last night at finishing the first half of the season undefeated on the road. So, you know, again, this is a testament to our veteran leadership, Um, you know, just working hard, coming ready to play in someone else's building. It's not so easy to just go on somebody else's court and win. So it was definitely an important win for us, Um, you know, moving forward and starting the Euro Cup coming up here on Wednesday with the top 16. It's important for us to, you know, build momentum and continue to play the way that we want to play in order to, you know, continue the path that we're, we're on right now. Uh, moving on to college, you were an ACC champion. Uh, do you feel like that champion ex- championship experience in college has helped you guys uh, succeed in the in the Euro Cup this year? Um, I mean, just knowing that I have experienced that is you know something that I will always carry with me, and uh, you know, a kind of a knowing what I had to sacrifice and what I had to do to be able to be a part of that. Um, it's important, but, you know, we have champions across the board, uh, guys that were EuroLeague champions that have won championships, respectively, in different countries in their career. So, you know, we definitely have a, a, a very heavy roster when it comes to, you know, championship experience, veteran experience, whether you're talking about NBA, EuroLeague, Euro Cup, you know, uh, NCAA, Division One, or whatever. So, you know, we have great players from top to bottom. And it's just great to to really be a part of that and, you know, be able to contribute to us winning more games even now in the past and in the future. And in college, you were ACC all defensive and you were also on, uh, on the all tournament team. Uh, what was that like, like when you were younger, just knowing that you had all these accomplishments already at such a young age? Um, I mean, I was from North Carolina, so, you know, playing in the ACC was always kind of a dream of mine. Um, North Carolina, the University of North Carolina was my favorite college team, so I I always watched them. So, you know, coming to a place where I was playing against them in Greensboro in the ACC tournament and to have an opportunity to to win a championship against my my favorite team growing up was definitely a, a dream come true. So, you know, I've definitely, like I said before, carried that experience with me. And I mean, I've just worked extremely hard for for every little opportunity that I've been given and try to take the absolute most advantage of it as I possibly can. So, I mean, for me, it's just about perseverance. Uh, I've had some injuries. I've had times where I didn't play so much when I was at Miami and, you know, going through some things in my pro career as well. So, you know, just being able to persevere through any of those adverse times has definitely served me well. Uh, what was it like moving from uh, the USA to uh, Europe when you were making that transition after going undrafted? Uh, it was tough. I mean, I went from Miami to a, a small town in France called uh, Saint Valier, which was uh, a population of about four thousand people. So you know, kind of just being dropped in the middle of of nowhere in France and. You know, being in a place where I don't understand any of the language, any of the culture, it was definitely a difficult adjustment. But, you know, for me, it was about having those veteran guys around me, even guys that I still stay in touch with today that were really able to guide me through that experience. So I think because of that, you know, I've definitely 
taking on that more of an obligation to be able to try to guide as many of these young guys that I see coming into the game today to to help ease their transition. And I'm still learning myself. So, you know, I'm, I'm continually learning from guys that are older than me, guys that are the same age as me and younger. So just to, to continually keep that open mind and really be able to to understand and learn some of the culture and be willing to to learn is is extremely important when you come overseas. Um, when coronavirus hit, was it like really tough not being able to see your uh, family as much and like everything shutting down? And obviously, you're in Italy, which was uh, at the beginning of the pandemic was really bad. Uh, how did you like uh, deal with a lot of those things shutting down and the season ending and not being able to see your family as much? Uh, it was difficult. I mean, I was in Italy for a while when the, the, the pandemic first hit. I actually went home um, the middle of March. So, you know, this is the time where very little is known about the virus and there was a lot of anxiety around it. So, you know, just from from that standpoint, it was definitely difficult. And, you know, this is just daily things are changing and you're learning new information and you know, you're really trying to keep to yourself as much as possible because, you know, we really at the time didn't know how dangerous this virus will really get at a global level. So once I was able to go back to the States, you know, I just kind of stayed with my immediate family, with my wife and my two children. And, you know, we just stayed together. I mean, that was the, the most important thing for me that definitely helped me mentally, spiritually and physically to be with them rather than just to be by myself. But, you know, I also spent time by myself when I was in Italy and they were actually already in the States before the pandemic hit. So it was definitely a difficult situation. I mean, it's been difficult on the entire world from then to this day. So, you know, it's something kind of like you take it a day at a time and, you know, just try to get through it. Uh, back on to the your, uh, your team, uh, Virtus Bologna. Uh how do you uh, feel about, like, having, like, NBA ex- uh, experience guys? Do you find that they help, like, bring, like, kind of, like, um, how do I – sorry, I got backtracked there. But, like, because they're, like, they have a lot of NBA experience. They're ready for those big moments when they're under the spotlight. Does that uh, – do they help your team in clutch moments, like guys like Marco Bellone- Bellinelli and Milos Teodosic? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these are two guys that have NBA experience. I mean, even talking about uh, Tio being in the league for a few years, but a guy like Marco to play 13 years in the NBA, I mean, his experience even winning an NBA championship is invaluable. Um, for me, I just think all of that stuff is relative. I mean, you know, these moments that we're going to go through over here are, are maybe nothing compared to what he's experiencing playing in a – a NBA finals game and winning the NBA championship. So, you know, uh, Marco and Tio bringing that experience, uh, their experiences from the NBA us uh, to us over here, has been invaluable for us. I mean, they're, they're two extremely smart guys. They know how to play the game. They know, you know, where they want to be and they know where we need to be. So, you know, we're all helping each other, whether it's, you know, those two guys that have NBA experience, other guys on our team that have EuroLeague experience, and, you know, whoever it is from top to bottom, we're all helping each other, and we're just, you know, one unit moving in a, a direction to try to accomplish our big goals. Uh, when you have, like, a big play, like a dunk or a clutch shot, do you have a go-to celebration that you go with? And if nah, so, could you really. demonstrate that? <laughs> no, nah, I mean, it's nothing really. Uh, You know, sometimes you don't. You don't really celebrate at all. I mean, you're you're so focused and so locked in in the moment and trying to get the win that you're you're not really worried about you know doing too much celebration. Other times, the emotion just kind of takes over, and you know you're you're putting your heart and your soul and your passion into these games, and you know sometimes you just have to let it out of you. So, uh, I I had an interview with Kyle Weems last week, and I asked him the same question. But prior to playing in Virtus uh, Bologna. Did you guys have sort of a rivalry? You know, you faced uh, up against each other a few times in Europe and both being like American players who were very successful in college. And did you guys have like a rivalry kind of earlier on in your careers before you became teammates? I I would say that the the very moment that we met, I guess when we played in that college game, there was a little bit of a rivalry. 
I mean, just because obviously we were two extremely competitive guys and we wanted to win. Kyle was the best guy on his team and I was one of the top guys on my team at the time. So, you know, we were trying to go at it to, you know, to get a victory. Um, since then, I think we've more kind of been closer and closer in our path. Um, we've been in some of the same places together. We This is our third club in the course of our careers that we played together. He played in Nantier. I played in Nantier. He played in Bonn in Germany. I played in Bonn in Germany. And now we're here together in Bologna. So, I mean, even if you talk about the structure of our families and, you know, both being married to former basketball players and having two children, like our lives are very similar in a way. Um, he's actually about three weeks older than me. So, you know, even from that standpoint, like we have a lot of similarities. Um, it's a guy that, you know, I can ask for advice. He asks me for advice and it's, you know, kind of a situation where we rely on each other for a lot of things and we built a, a definitely a strong bond and a great chemistry, you know, over the years, not even just the time that we played together and, you know, kind of supporting each other and, and cheering for each other, whether it be, you know, in public or in private, but, you know, that's a guy that I, I consider my brother for sure. Uh, when you were growing up, did you have any, like, uh, favorite player that you looked up to a lot? Um, well, initially, it was guys that were playing for North Carolina. Uh, early on, one of my favorite players was Sean May. Um, you know, I watched a lot of North Carolina basketball, and he was a, a great big man in his own right. I think um, even after that, into my high school years, I was a huge fan of Amari Stoudemire. Um, you know, in his time in Phoenix when he was playing with Steve Nash, even his time in New York, like he was playing fantastic basketball. Um, I've always been a fan of Lamar Odom, uh, being a, another lefty and really admiring his skill and the way that he plays the game and the way he can kind of play, you know, multiple positions was, was something that I always wanted to do as well. So, you know, these were just a, a few guys of many because I'm a student of the game. I mean, I definitely basketball and I'm even, you know, still watching today of some of these younger guys that are in the league that are amazing talents. But, uh, yeah, these were a few guys that I definitely kind of idolized growing up. Uh, growing up, do you have like a favorite NBA team? Uh, what And if so, what team was that? <laughs> I mean, early on, I I think when I was super young, this was like, the, the time where Michael Jordan and the Bulls were everything in the NBA. So, you know, at the time it was the Bulls, but that was only because Michael Jordan really. After that, it was kind of always the Lakers. And, you know, as I continued to get older, I, I really kind of shot away from really just liking one team and really started just liking the game. I mean, there's so many players that are amazing talents and generational talents. I mean, if you talk about the the Kobe Bryant's, the LeBron's, Kevin Durant's, you know, James Harden's, the list goes on and on. I don't want to cheer against these guys. I mean, I want to enjoy them and their game and their time in the league for what it is. So, you know, I've really just become a fan of the game. Yeah, uh, I'm also a big fan of the game. Uh, I find that my favorite player growing up has always been Vince Carter. Uh, yeah. Just like the way he revolutionized Toronto basketball and stuff like that, brought he mm -hmm. kind of put Canada on the map. But yeah. um, did you have any like uh uh like NBA players that you like met when you were in college? Like, did you have any kind of like NBA experiences of players that you like maybe befriended and stuff like that? Um, maybe not befriended, but, uh, experience that I had that was pretty cool, uh, when I was in college was during the NBA lockout. Um, I was in Miami and, you know, LeBron and Chris Bosh and Pat Beverly and some other guys from the heat came over to the university and they were working out and playing pickup ball with us. So, you know, at this time, this is like what, maybe I think 2010, something like that. Um, seeing LeBron up close and personal on the basketball court with you at the same time. It's like everything that, you know, people see on TV is, is real life, if not more, like actually being on the court with this guy and watching the way that he moves with his size and his speed and strength uh, was something that was pretty cool. Um, seeing a guy like Chris Bosh, another lefty, uh, his skill, his dedication, the way that he worked extremely hard. But I think, you know, just in the summertime and the off season being down in Miami, a lot of guys frequent that place. Um, a lot of guys were working out over at the school. So, you know, I saw many of 
all stars, great NBA players coming in and out of University of Miami all the time in summer. Um, back on the Euro Cup, so when it comes to preparing for big games like uh, what you guys like during the season, how often do you practice like a week? Um, our practice schedule is is pretty routine. It just kind of depends on when we play our last game. Um, you know, coming up to a, a game, you know, again, this goes back to our veteran leadership uh, and our experience. You don't really need to, you know, go in the gym and kill yourself. You need to go in and you need to get quality reps in, um, you know, be focused on a specific goal so that you know that when we're about to play this team, these are our focuses. These are the things that we want them to do. These are the things that we want to do. You know, we go in there and do it. We're professional about it and we work hard. You know, even after practice ends, you see guys sticking around, getting extra work in. So, you know, we just kind of stick to our routine. Um, you kind of enter a realm where no matter who you're playing, it's not about them. It's about you. It's about the way that you prepare and about the way that, that, that you bring yourself to the court with the, with the right energy, the right intensity, you know, being able to execute the game plan. And whenever we do that, I always like our chances. Uh, when you were first starting off uh, playing in Europe, do you have a sort of moment like a welcome to professional basketball moment when you were just like uh, another player might have like uh, embarrassed you on the court or something like that? Um, not necessarily. I mean, I think it, for me, it was as soon as I got there. Um, this was professional basketball. Like uh I landed in the airport in France. I drove, I think, an hour and a half to my city. I had no idea where it was at. Um, the the vice president of the team dropped me off at my apartment, and, you know, he left and said, I'll be back in an hour and a half to bring you to practice. I'm like, I didn't have Wi-Fi. You know, I didn't at that point even have much food in my house. And when I came to practice, it was trying to perform. So for me, it's just like this is professional basketball. Like there's no nobody's going to be holding your hand. You're completely out here by yourself. You know, people will help you to an extent, but they don't have to. So, you know, for me, this was a moment, like, as soon as I touched down, that I knew that, you know, this is my profession. And, and if I wanted to do this, that this is something that I would experience. And when you started off in St. Valier, uh, did you have, like, your teammates, did, uh, did they mentor you well? Like, did you find that, like, you found it easy to connect with them? despite, like, maybe having, like, completely different worlds? Well, I mean, for me, initially, like, I, you know, befriended the French guys on my team, and they were they were pretty good and decently helpful. Um, but I really relied on the other imports, the Americans, um, even two guys that I still talk to to this day, uh, Jared Newsom and Jason Forte, uh, at the time were both over 10-year vets overseas. So they definitely took me under their wing. I mean, they showed me the ins and outs of what this game could be. And we spent, you know, many a nights just talking about their many experiences. And I, and I kind of took that into my own story. And they kind of helped mold the the professional that I would become. So I'm, I'm eternally grateful, you know, to those two guys. And I still stay in contact with them, you know, to this day. So, you know, as I've seen, you can definitely create these kind of lifelong uh, bonds early in your professional career, you know, when it comes to these guys kind of mentoring you and just and just giving you, you know, some of their time and showing you that they care about you outside of just when you have to practice. All right. Uh, well, that's about all the time we have for today. Thank you for the interview and uh, good luck with your uh, games. And I'm hoping to see you guys in the Euro League next season. Uh, but, uh, have a good one, man. All right. Thanks a lot. See ya.